Sigmund Freud was an Austrian neurologist and he's considered by many to be the founder of psychoanalysis. He was born in 1856 and he died in 1939. And Freud came out with many theories and ideas about the mind and how the mind works. One of these theories which still continues today is the model of the mind. And Freud said that the mind was like an iceberg and at the very tip of the iceberg are the things that we're consciously aware of, our conscious thoughts, and things that we we know about. And then on an unconscious level there are the things that are operating us on a day-to-day -day basis, things that we're, we're not actually aware of. So, in the conscious mind is where we have our thoughts and perceptions. And then, just below that, Freud said there was the subconscious. And in the subconscious are uh, things that we could be aware of if we wanted to or tried, things like memories and stored knowledge. And then, Freud said there was a part of mind which he called the unconscious. In the unconscious mind were the things that we were unaware of and could not become aware of. And this is something that is not, a, not that popular in modern psychology. Freud believed that the unconscious was like a, a cesspool of unacceptable sexual desires, and violent motives, and immoral urges, selfishness. He said that in this part of mind was where we locked away shameful experiences and traumatic events. And underneath that, Freud said there was the ID. And this was how we perceive ourselves. And this was made up of all the experiences and things that we'd been through. And Although, as I said, a lot of this has been debunked and isn't considered as relevant in modern times. The, the idea of the conscious and subconscious part of the mind is still, still popular. Um, and especially with regards to hypnotherapy, you know, we have the opinion that the subconscious or non-conscious part of the mind is there and looking to protect you, looking to keep you safe. And one of the ways it does this is by going to what it knows. So if you've grown up in an environment which was dysfunctional, the subconscious will look to keep recreating dysfunctional situations because Although they may not be, you know, very nice or pleasant, they may not be what you think you want on a conscious level. The subconscious, you know, knows that you're still alive, so it's going to creep, keep recreating those things to make sure that you you stay safe and alive, and until you work on those things and 
change those subconscious beliefs and memories, you're going to keep repeating the same patterns to, until you learn your lesson and overcome those old issues. So that's why we use hypnosis to overcome those old problems and if as a child you were put down and told you were stupid or not capable of doing stuff or maybe you were just given irrational beliefs or beliefs that don't serve you I mean a common belief would be the belief that money doesn't grow on trees you know this can this can play out in adult life and it can cause a, a lack of confidence and make you feel unco uncomfortable in who you are and uncomfortable and cause you concerns about money and one of Freud's theories which has been largely debunked is the theory of repressed memories Freud had a patient, it's said that Freud had a a patient who had a he had an accident, he got knocked over and he couldn't remember the incident and so they they developed the theory that the incident was just too traumatic for him to recall and that's why he couldn't remember it but obviously in Freud's time they didn't have access to brain scans and things like that and it's said that if they had and they had have scanned his brain they'd have noticed that he had a closed brain injury so he'd suffered some brain damage that wasn't wasn't visible without a you know some kind of scan or something and the subconscious mind remembers everything is something that a, a lot of hypnotherapists believe and a belief that a lot of you know hypnotherapists promote particularly people that do regression and things like that and this may be true but I always tell my clients that if you cannot remember an event it's because it didn't happen so it's not considered good practice to regress people to memories that they're not sure of these days you know if someone there were times in the past when people would go and see a therapist and you know, come out come back from therapy believing that they'd been molested by their mother or someone when they were a child. This led to a lot of court cases and a lot of issues and as I say this has been largely debunked and that's not the purpose of this course and Dr Richard J McNally is a professor and director of clinical training at Harvard University and he gave this quote he said the notion that traumatic events can be repressed and later recovered is the most pernicious bit of folklore to ever infect psychology and psychiatry it has provided the theoretical basis for recovered memory therapy, the worst catastrophe to befall the mental health field since the lobotomy era. So, if you are looking to be regressed to an event that you're not sure whether or not it happened, I would say don't do it. If you're not sure or you can't recall a memory I would say it's because it didn't happen and it has been proven that just by 
accessing a memory we change it every time we access a memory we we change it and so you can look back over the past you know from a depressed state and think that your life was terrible and remember lots and lots of depressing times whereas if you you know look back at it from a happier time you can remember lots and lots of happy memories and happy times and tests have been done for example with regards to witnesses of a car crash to some people they use the term crash and they had a different description of the event than the people that they asked so they asked some people what happened when you saw the crash and they gave a different account of the event to the people that they asked what happened when you saw the smash so when they asked the people what happened when they saw the smash they remembered seeing broken glass and all kinds of stuff whereas when they said the crash they had a completely different memory so memories can be changed and you know language can change your perception of things so yeah that's just a bit about Sigmund Freud and the unconscious mind the iceberg model of the mind and the theory of repressed memories